Rice Chex and Wheat Chex. The bite-sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol! High adventure and the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are in their spacesuits examining some mining equipment on a small planetoid. From the looks of things, old Captain Hackett doesn't intend to abandon his diggings. Well, we warned him. If we left this machinery and explosives here, they'll have to be destroyed. Commander, it's our ship. Hackett must have sneaked aboard. What does he think that'll get him? All we have to do is space up on Saturn. Yeah, listen. What's that, sir? Sounds like a warning pulsation from a detonator control. Wow, where's it coming from? Right from that stack of explosives. Hackett's trying to blow us up. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, Captain Hackett's Planetoid. Rockets away, Captain. Here it comes. Smoking rockets. This pocket-sized cosmic rocket launcher sure is terrific. A rocket with a miniature snap-on scout car. Real neat. No wonder everybody wants one. Right half of space patrollers, wait till you try out your own swell cosmic rocket launcher. Lots of fun, plenty of action. Just press the trigger and whoom, watch it zoom down that nylon cord. Wham, hits a target and bang, down goes the scout car. Right, you bat it yourself from the trigger of its stainless steel launching gun. It travels down 33 feet of special nylon cords. Send it on long trips or short hops. Launch it solo or with one of your pals. Launch it over and over and over. The rocket and its snap-on double-deck scout car are specially constructed of slick, durable plastic. Weatherproof and shatterproof plastic in keen-looking colors, red and yellow. Okay, Captain, tell the space patrollers how they can get a cosmic rocket launcher. Go ahead, that's an order. Uh, yes, sir. Just send a rice checks or wheat checks box top, or send a special premium panel from the side of a Nestle's quick can or the lid, together with your name and address and 25 cents in coin, to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 25 cents. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. Rockets away, space patrollers. Send for yours today. And now, today's space patrol adventure, Captain Hackett's Planetoid. The space patrol, under the direction of Commander Corey, continues the unrelenting search for Prince Baccarati. For the time being, however, the evil prince seems to have suspended his criminal operations. Right now, on Saturn's sixth moon... The Space Miners Outfitting and Supply Company is having its own special problem, for Captain Hackett is in camp. It is the bad fortune of Wilbur Jenkins, assistant manager, to be on duty alone in the supply center as the old Space Miners storms in. There's my list, Jenkins, all itemized. How soon can you fill that order and get supplies to my ship? I'm very sorry, Captain Hackett, but we simply can't extend any more credit. Jenkins, you're an idiot. What would you say if I told you I'll be back in 90 days with 100,000 credits with a molybdenum? M- molybdenum? No, 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 it's all right. I've been glad it been all over a satellite. Now, listen, I've located some bifonite with a high content of molybdenum. In a few months, I can make enough to retire. Well, that's, that's the story. Now, get busy and fill this list. I'm very sorry, Captain Hacken. It's a, a matter of policy. No more credit. All right, Jenkins. You will be sorry. Give me my list. As Captain Hackett angrily strides out of the Space Miner's supply house, two men follow him at a discreet distance. At the spaceport, the miner trumps toward a battered spaceship with the two men strolling after him. Well, if he recognize me. We've been on Saturn number six for three days, and no one has recognized me. Don't worry. No one is going to suspect Prince Baccarati of loitering around a remote mining supply center. Just let me do the talking. Yes, yeah, uh, Yes, Mr. Borzak. Excuse me. Uh, you're Captain Hackett, aren't you? That's right. What about it? I'm Paul Borzak, and uh, this is my partner, Don Falcon. We're in the investment business on Jupiter. Perhaps you heard of me? Or that? Huh? Hope never did. I couldn't help overhearing. 
I thought perhaps you and I might work out something together. I don't remember that. Just this. If you're sure you can bring back a payload, I might finance you, state you to supplies and equipment. And for what percentage of the profits? What do you expect to make on your first payload? Maybe. Oh, yeah. Would you give me a quarter of that? That's fair enough, Mr. Borzak. How much will you need to out with your ship and settle your account with the supply company? Altogether, 4,500 credits. All right. Captain, here are five 1,000 credit notes. Go back to the center and get what you need. Okay, Mr. Borzak. <laughs> will Jenkins sees this. Oh, just a minute, Captain. I prefer that no one else knew that I am backing you. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Every dead bee on the six moon will be after you for a hand. Now, well, don't worry, Mr. Borzak. I'm good at keeping secrets. You have to be in this business. Well, yeah, honey. What next? When he blasts off, we'll trail him in another ship. We'll find out where he gets that wolf and I go. An accident will happen to Captain Hackett. And I'll have his secret all to myself. Far off the regular space lanes, the Terra 5 roars along in a sweeping vector over the Saturn orbit. Buzz and Happy intently watch the viewscope screen as the scanning beams probe the blackness that surrounds them. I think I've got it, sir. Yep, it's an asteroid. And a big one. Check the space coordinates, Hap. Yes, sir. The baby we're after will give a close inspection. Might even be worth sending some lab ships out to make tests. Yes, sir, but why bother to make tests if it's going to be blown up? The experts might be able to tell where it originally came from. Some of the Neptune astronomers think it might not be a part of our solar system. Maybe a wanderer from another system. And it got caught in the gravity field of our sun. Yes. If it was thrown off by another system, our scientists want to sample it. Whatever force kicked that planetoid in our direction, we must have given it a terrific wallop. Hap, look at the screen. But the ship is landing on that asteroid. Maybe the lab ship is ahead of us. Yeah, it's not a lab ship, huh? It's like a small cargo ship. Well, what's a cargo ship landing there for? Must be a tramp ship in trouble. Well, in case our velocity half, we try to contact them by space phone. Repeated calls by Happy failed to bring any response from the ship landed on the tiny planetoid. Moments later, the Terra 5 settles down on the mysterious mass of metal and rock close to the small cargo ship. Commander, look. Somebody's coming toward us. Well, <laughs> I might have known it. What do you mean, sir? I recognize that ship now. It belongs to Captain Hackett. He's been prospecting for years in the asteroid belt. If anybody would find this offbeat chunk of rock, Captain Hackett would be the man. Oh, a space miner. Turn on the space gun. Yes, sir. Commander aboard Terra 5 calling Captain Hackett. Do you read me, Captain? Yes, Commander, I read you. I tried to contact your ship. Having trouble? Not till you landed. And a man work is digging out the space patrol barge and in. What's wrong now? Better come aboard, Captain, and I'll explain. Corey out. Well, he doesn't sound as though he likes you. Or the space patrol, either. That's his general attitude toward everybody, huh? Well, there's a warning light, sir. He's in the airlock. Open the inner hand. Welcome aboard, Captain. Uh, hey, Captain Hackett, this is Cadet Happy. How do you do, Captain? Uh, yeah, yeah. I asked what you're doing in this planetoid, Captain. Doing a little prospecting. And I got a right to. This is my planetoid by right of discovery. I've already filed my claim. The papers are in my ship. Now, anything wrong with that? No, nothing's wrong. But it might be dangerous to stay here. What do you mean, dangerous? Captain, I'm sorry, but this planetoid is going to be blown up with a cosmic bomb. Blown up? What for? Because of its eccentric orbit. In a few days, it'll cross the orbits of the inner planets. So what? It won't be a menace to space travel? That's where we disagree, Captain. It'll pass close to the sun. The tremendous gravity pull will hurl it into a new orbit. It's an unstable orbit. It'll be a menace to artificial satellites circling Mercury, Earth, Terra, and Venus. No telling how much damage it'll do before it finally spirals into the sun. I won't have it. This is the biggest strike ever made in my life. Now you say you're going to blast it with that cosmic bomb. Strike? What kind of a strike? Wolf and I, richest ore ever saw. There's millions of credits worth of molybdenum right under this ship. Captain, listen to me. I'll have a lab ship come here and make some tests. 
There is valuable ore here you can put in a claim to the government for a reasonable amount. Reasonable amount. Well, 50 million credits would be a reasonable amount. Captain, with your present equipment, could you get 50 million credits worth of ore out of here before the planetoid crashes into the sun, say, in uh, 10 days? I... Uh, no, of course not. So whether we bomb the planetoid or not, it'll be destroyed. Keep that in mind. So you'll get a fair indemnity if you cooperate. Well, I should put it that way. There's a lab ship on Saturn moon number six. I can have it out here for tests in a few hours. Saturn six? Well, that's... Uh, I was thinking maybe I could uh, file my claim on Saturn six. Fine. Now, for your own safety, Captain, I suggest you stay clear of this planetoid until you hear from me. I'll stop off at Saturn six and make arrangements for the ore test. Later, in a small room at a small space hotel on Saturn 6, Captain Hackett explains this recent turn of events to his backer, a man he knows as Mr. Borzak, but who actually is Prince Baccarati. Baccarati's accomplice, John Feltkamp, squirms uncomfortably at the news. Baccarati, alias Borzak, seems unperturbed. Captain, didn't it occur to you that you are being taken advantage of? Cheated? Oh, what do you mean? How do you know this planetary goes titled into the sun and be destroyed? Why, Commander Corey said so. Of course. Now, suppose the government pays you a few thousand credits and then proceeds to mine the minerals itself. And suppose the planetary doesn't strike the sun. You will have given away your fortune. Oh, well, Corey always impressed me as being honest. Every man has his prize, Captain. And in this case, millions are involved. Now, wait, Corey didn't know there was anything valuable there. Are you sure he didn't? Anyway, isn't that strange that Corey was suddenly so anxious to have you file for damages? Yeah. He wants you out of the way. Cheap and late. Well, I don't know. Captain Hackett, where is your famous shrewdness? Your knowledge of man. Why, I heard that nobody could put anything over the intelligent Captain Hackett. Nobody's going to put anything over on me, especially the space patrol. I'll fix them. I won't sign anything. And what's more, I'll take care of Corey. See you later, gentlemen. Oh, wow. Captain's really mad. Yeah, but how's that going to help us? You know Corey wouldn't lie. The space patrol really will blow up that planet. Of course. We'll lose that unvaluable ore. But we'll soon be with us. Oh, and I'll tell it you. Captain Hackett is furious. He'll go all over the supply center making threats against Commander Corey. Yeah, but he won't carry him out. He's just a big bag of wind. Yes. But suppose something does happen to Corey? Who do you think will be blamed? Your Highness, you're a genius. Near the spaceport on Saturn 6 is a small building reserved for space patrol personnel. After arranging for a lab ship test of Captain Hackett's planetoid, Buzz and Appy say goodnight in the corridor, and Buzz goes to his room. As he turns on the light, a man wearing the mask points a paralyzer ray gun at him. Hold it, Corey. Hold it, Corey. I warned you. Now watch this closely, Commander. There's nothing you can do except look. You know what this is? The gas under. Full of tetramethanite gas under pressure. Used in mining operation and it's poison. I didn't know that before. You will in a moment. Just put the cylinder on the floor. Ah, excuse me. This gas works fast. Goodbye, Commander. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Wow, Captain Tufel, our cosmic rocket launcher sure went traveling that time. Yes, sir, Space Patroller used all 33 feet of launching cord. Hey, let's make this trip a short one, okay? Okay. All set? Here goes. <coughs> you see, Captain? A direct hit. Yes, a direct hit every time, Space Patroller. Hey, do you want to launch it solo for a while? You bet. Gang, you can have the same kind of meat fun my pal and I are having right now with a cosmic rocket launcher like ours. Now, the rocket is six inches long with a snap-on double-deck scout car, specially constructed of shatterproof red and yellow plastic. You rig it on a breakproof nylon cord, and you get 33 feet of it for long trips or short hops. You launch it by pressing the trigger on a stainless steel launching gun. 
down that cord, it whizzes with lightning fast speed, hits its target, and automatically releases the scout car. And say, there's a secret place in the scout car for secret messages. Space Patroller, here's the message I've got in my scout for all of you from Commander Corey. Feed it to him, Captain Tufel. To get a super keen cosmic rocket launcher of your own, just send the rice checks or wheat checks box top, or send the special premium panel from the side of a Nestle's quick can, or the lid, together with your name and address, and 25 cents in coin, to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 25 cents. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> And now back to our Space Patrol adventure, Captain Hackett's Planetoid. Prince Baccarati has contrived a way to dispose of Commander Corey, so the blame will be placed on Captain Hackett. Baccarati's accomplice, John Felkamp, rendered Commander Corey helpless with a paralyzer ray gun, then opened the valve of a container of poisonous gas used in mining operations. Unaware of the peril buzzes in, Happy sits on his bunk in his room down the hall, reading a microfilm book. Suddenly, he cuts off the projector and walks down the hall to the commander's door. Smoking rockets. Commander, what happened? <coughs> Gas. <coughs> it's poison. Here, I'll, I'll shut it off. <coughs> I'd better get you out in the hall. The paralyzer ray, huh? Yes. Oh. <coughs> That's better. You got here just in time, have you? I forgot what time you wanted me to report in the morning. I just came down to find out. Yeah, this is one time I'm grateful for your lapse of memory. Same here. Who did it? Nah, I couldn't tell. He was wearing mining clothes. He wore a mask. He looked over now. How can you stand up on him? Yes, sir. What kind of gas was that? Pepper nothing right. Miners use it to test for certain minerals. And the gas in there is partly dissipated by now. If you get the cylinder out of the room, we'll take it over to the supply center and see if we can trace the serial number. Yes, Commander. That cylinder was bought here at this store. Uh, here's the cart. You see, here's the serial number, the date of purchase, and the name of the purchaser. Fine. Who bought the cylinder? Oh, Captain Hackett. Captain Hackett? Well, Hackett seems to be getting careless with his supplies. Well, come on, Happy. Let's get back to our quarters. Thanks, Mr. Jenkins. So, uh, anytime, Commander. Commander, Hackett must be crazy to do what he did. It wasn't Hackett, Hackett. Sure, I'd have recognized Hackett's voice. Commander, when we last saw Hackett, you and he were almost pals. Why did he change? Let's ask Hackett. He's probably headed for his planetoid. Sir, the ship's not ready. The maintenance crew will be working on it for another three hours. They'll check out in a small lunar job. Hackett, you told me you finished Corey, and now you tell me he's alive. Look, I don't know what happened, Your Highness. Something went wrong. Corey and the cadet went into the store a while ago carrying the gas and come. Found it. I'll bet that kid had rescued him. Where's that old fool, Captain Hackett? I think he's blasted off for his planet. We've got to get him before Corey has a chance to talk to him. Yeah, but Hackett doesn't know. He'd try to do away with Corey. Of course not. But suppose Corey looks us up to Jack Hackett's story. Uh, he'll recognize him. Exactly. Oh, he's still on Moon 6. Crew's working on his ship at the port. Come on. We'll get to the spaceport. We've got to make sure Corey never finds Hackett alive. There you are, Your Highness. That's Hackett's planet, sir. Are you sure that's the one? Yeah, of course. I told you I located when I trailed Hackett the other day. Well, let's have procedure. Land, take him aboard, and then dispose of him later? No. The space patrol would find his ship and wonder what became of him. We'll finish him right there on the planetoid. But that's worse. I don't know what happened to him, then. We'll make it look like an accident. Hackett must have explosives in his ship or around his digging. Everyone on Saturn takes nose. He's worked out. Angry? How natural to assume the captain got careless. Now you're talking. That'll solve everything. Say, Commander, suppose Hackett isn't just a hot-headed guy who popped off. Suppose that fellow in the mask was a pal of Hackett's. It's a possibility, Hap. You'll soon know. 
where Prince Baccarati's space cruiser lands on Hackett's planetoid near the miner's cargo ship. After a brief space upon conversation, Captain Hackett enters the airlock, opens his helmet face piece, and glares at the men in the ship. How did you find this planetoid, Borzak? You can't expect to keep this secret indefinitely, Captain. After all, the space patrol knows about it. Uh, uh, that's right. Why did you come here? I've made up my mind to work my claim until I'm forced off. I'll make an issue of it. You men back me, so it's only fair warning. In case you don't want to get involved with a space patrol. Mm -hmm. You can work this claim by yourself? Sure. I got machinery and explosives. It works. You plan to use explosives, then? I'll probably have to. I've got electronic detonators, Mr. Borzag. I can set them on the charge, walk away a few hundred yards, press a switch, and boom. Very interesting. I'd like to see this equipment. Well, the portable control mechanism's in the ship. The rest of the stuff's down there in that crater-like depression where all the heavy equipment is. Yeah, Ennis. Look. Look at the view scope. The ship. It's coming right toward us. I'll let them come. I'm staying right here. Hey. Wait a minute. Well, Camp, what did you call him? Your Highness? Why, I, I... Yes, Captain. You did call me by my rightful title. I'm Prince Baccarati. Baccarati? Crook. I thought your face looked familiar. Wait a minute. You were lying about Corey. Yes, Captain. But it's too late to do anything about it. Get him, Captain. Use your razor. No. You'd better blast off quick, Your Highness. Wait a minute. We still have time to carry out our plan. Falcon, close Hackett's space helmet and carry him down into the crater, below the mining equipment. Okay. Then get the detonator control out of Hackett's ship. You can hide behind those rocks over there. Then our best off... Now, wait a minute. You mean you're leaving me here? Just for a short time. If that ship lands and someone gets out to investigate, you blow out the explosives. Then I'll come back and get you. Uh, how can I be sure? Well, even if I don't, you still have Hackett's ship for a getaway... Or even the ship that's now on its way. I still don't like it. I've taken all the risks. And... That's the way it's going to be. Now, get Hackett out of here. I want to blast off before that other ship sees me. By the time Commander Corey lands the small lunar ship on the planetoid, Prince Baccarati's cruiser is a tiny speck, almost invisible, in the black void of space. When Hackett fails to answer their space phone call, Buzz and Happy get out of their ship, and in their spacesuits make their way across the rough, rocky surface toward the stacks of supplies and mining equipment. Too like Hackett to hide out. Maybe he's down the crater setting up drilling equipment. Commander, it's our ship. Somebody sneaked aboard it and blasted off. Captain Hackett. What does he think that'll get him? All we have to do is space up on Saturn and... Hey, or we can take off after him in his own ship. It'll be faster anyway. Yeah, listen. What's that, sir? Sounds like a warning pulsation from a detonator control. Detonator control? Where's it coming from? Right from that stack of explosives. Hackett's trying to blow us up. By remote control? From our ship. Yes, he must have had a portable rig. He would better get out of this crater. We'll never make it. Pam, stay here. I'm going to try to reach that detonator. What? Top of the explosives. I can break that control circuit. Can you locate the switch? I hope this is the right one. Keep down. Under the signal stop. Nothing happens in five seconds. We're safe. One, two, three, four. Well, might as well get up. We made it. Yes. Hate to know by how many millionths of a second. Well, you're taking this calmly. Well, I figured you knew what you were doing. Uh, now, hey, Commander, look. Somebody at the bottom of the crater. Come on, Hap. Sir, if that was Hackett that blasted off in our ship... Well, then who's this? I think I recognize that space suit, huh? Uh-huh. This is Captain Hackett. It is? Well, then who tried to blow us up? Who blasted off in our ship? Somebody who wanted us and Captain Hackett out of the way. Hell camp calling Prince Baccarati. Hell camp calling Prince Baccarati. Oh, oh. Now, if you're a space opponent, you fool, I'm coming back. But something went wrong. There wasn't an explosion. Corey's still alive. Baccarati, you hear me? I'm in one of those slow lunar type ships. Come back, pick me up with your ship. The Highness, come back. I have no time for bunglers. Baccarat, yeah. Chris Baccarat, the Highness, help me. Happy. Hackett may still be alive. We'll get him aboard his ship and blast off after that lunar job. (laughs) 
How do you feel now, Captain? Uh, all right, Commander. I... Why, we're aboard my ship. That's right. Commander, I owe you an apology. I was a fool. Commander, there's that lunar type ship we're gaining fast. Elcap. Elcap? Uh, that's Baccarati's partner. They lied to me, Commander. I know. Watch out for Baccarati. He's a slick one. Unfortunately, Baccarati isn't in that ship. He's just got Feldcamp to deal with. Turn the space on him. Benicori, to Feldcamp aboard Lunar Type Ship S-687. Corey to Feldcamp. We've got you in our view scope and we're gaining on you fast. What's your decision? I'm waiting, Feldcamp. Feldcamp, Commander Corey. I'm giving up. I cut off all rockets. What about Baccarati? Where's he headed? I don't know. That's the truth. I know I tell you. Double cross me. Stand by to board this ship, Felcamp. Hurry out. Commander, uh, I owe you and a cadet plenty. You saved me from Baccarati and his pal. All along, you were trying to help me. I went around saying those lies about you. I get it, Captain. You were deceived, that's all. Sure, and you were worried about losing that planetoid. That's right. Something that important would upset anybody. Oh, well, maybe it 